This experiment is about measuring the angle from the horizon up to Polaris at different locations on Earth. Well, why is this interesting, you ask? Well, Polaris is a group of stars located very close to true north. On a flat Earth model, this means Polaris would have to be above the North Pole, and we can measure the angle up to it. All such measurements taken at different places on Earth should hit the same single point. If the Earth is not flat, but a ball, that would greatly change the angles we measure, as the surface we stand on curves. So this is a good experiment to determine the shape of the Earth. Before we can find this angle, we need to be able to find Polaris first. Polaris is also called the North Star, because it's currently only around 0.7 degrees from true north. In the year 2100, it will be 0.45 degrees from true north. This changes over a 26,000 year cycle called the precession of the equinoxes. I'm not going to go into further details about this, but just note that the North Star is not the same star over time. In fact, currently there isn't an easy visible South Star in the Southern Hemisphere, so the experiment we do is only possible as described on the Northern Hemisphere. Luckily, 90% of the Earth's population live in the Northern Hemisphere, because that's where the most habitable land masses are. If you do live on the Southern Hemisphere, then perhaps you can think of a way we can do a similar experiment. Let me know in the comments. Let's learn how to spot Polaris in the evening or night sky. This is a skill that can be useful if you need a compass direction and you happen to have lost your smartphone. Speaking of smartphones, both Android and iOS have a sky map app that you can download and it's free. It will cost you around $3 to unlock it to get navigational assist. This means you'll get an arrow pointing in the direction you need to move your phone to find the entered object. But let me show you how to find Polaris without an app. The North Star is not the brightest star in the sky, so we need to find something that's clearly visible to be able to pinpoint it. We're looking for the Big Dipper. It has many names, like the Plow the frying pan, or whatever you want to call it. It's part of the Ursa Major constellation. Please note that due to Earth's rotation, all stars seem to be rotating around North every 24 hours. On star trails, you see that Polaris is not exactly at the North Pole, as it too has a trail, but it's not much. So the Big Dipper may be upside down or rotated. Once you have located it, find the two stars at the end of the plow or the pan, measure the distance between them and go in the direction these stars point to. Go five of these lengths and Polaris will be on the opposite side of that line compared to the Big Dipper. Okay, that was using a screenshot from an app. Let's try on an actual photo. Note, it's much easier to spot in real life because you have fewer stars that confuse you. Notice that the stars connecting the handle to the pan is dimmer than the rest, and it is a bit difficult to spot. Once again, we go five lengths along the line and find Polaris on the opposite side of the line. Congratulations, you are now an expert in finding Polaris. It is, as I mentioned, much easier in real life. If you cannot spot the Big Dipper, you are most likely looking in the wrong part of the sky. Look around or use a sky map app. Even if clouds cover up the view to Polaris, you can still estimate where it should be by just locating the end of the Big Dipper. In this experiment, we want to have Polaris in plain sight, but for navigation, this is not necessary. Once Polaris is located and you want a compass direction, all you do is project the point straight down to the ground and you know which direction true north is. Well, at least to 0.7 degrees of accuracy. You can draw a line in the sand from where you are towards the found north direction. And once you know north, the rest of the directions can be derived. Right. Our experiment requires us to measure the angle from the horizon up to Polaris. There are already instruments that could do this, such as a beautiful astrolabe. It can find a lot more than just the angle, but since deciphering the symbols can be a bit of work, this is not our best option. The astrolabe uses gravity to find the horizon, but since boats tend to move around, the astrolabe was later replaced with a sextant, which is a high precision instrument. But it comes with a disadvantage for our use case. Namely, you need a view to the horizon, which is not easy when you're on land. It's better to make a simple measuring device yourself that uses the force of gravity like the astrolabe. All you need is an angle measure, a string, some counterweight, and some tape. Here's the first one I built. 
I found a straw to be too narrow to see Polaris through, so I used a PVC pipe. To get better accuracy, I later built a bigger one, and I removed the PVC pipe as it did not give accurate results. I cut a small groove to ensure the string wouldn't slide around when angled. You could also use a digital angle measure like this $20 one. I tried various methods, this is the one I ended up with. It is best to have whatever you're measuring held in place. I used an old vise, and instead of clamping it to a table, I clamped it to a photo stand. Less will of course do it, but I'll explain why I needed the extra accuracy in a moment. If you use a string, you can press and hold the string in place until the measurement can be made. I just took flash photos of it, as it was too dark to make the reading. If you lose sight of Polaris, then you can turn your head and use your peripheral vision to find it again. Using a handheld device, you're not likely to get an accuracy that's better than one degree, even if you take many, many measurements. The thing is you can't see if the counterweight is at resting point in the darkness, you cannot see if you accidentally affect the string placement while pressing it down. If you make your own device, you first align it to point to Polaris, then wait for the weight to point to the center of gravity, then clamp down the string and make your measurements. In this case it's 75 degrees, so the angle up to Polaris in this case is 90 minus 75, which is 15 degrees. You want to map your reading so it tells you how many degrees there is from the horizon up to Polaris, where 0 means no angle and 90 means 100% vertical. Now we can find Polaris and we can measure the angle up to it. But before doing that, let's examine what this angle is on a globe Earth. It turns out that that angle up to Polaris can be used to estimate what latitude you're on. And this has actually been done for many, many years by navigators through history. There is a reason astrolabes and sextants exist, and they can do a lot more than what I show here. We will now prove that it can be used as an estimation for your latitude. Let's look at it from a theoretical point of view. A latitude of zero means we are at the equator. Let's rotate 15 degrees to point to a latitude of 15 degrees north. We rotate in the same direction 90 degrees more to get our horizon plane. We rotate a bit back opposite direction with the degrees of our latitude. The sum of all these rotations is 90 degrees, which means we are now pointing due north. So if you can find something that's due north and measure the angle up to it, then that is the same as the latitude you are located at, if the Earth is a ball. If that made no sense whatsoever, I have made a more formal proof in the companion file to this video. Alright, stay with me, it will all become apparent in a moment. The top model is what we are going to prove. As it is now, the theoretical proofs we have made all use a globe earth model, which we have not proven yet. So our task is to prove that the angle up to Polaris is as we predict it to be. Polaris is more than 400 light years away, so any light from it will be parallel lines when hitting the earth. If we can prove that the angle up to Polaris is as the top model indicates, then you can see in the bottom that team flat earth is in trouble, as these angles do not point in the same direction. If we extend the directions, they do not point to a single point as believed. We will soon know which is true. Okay, there is only one single point we need to know before I present my measurements. Remember I said Polaris is not exactly at true north. This means we need to add approximately 0.7 degrees to our measurements to get a more accurate latitude estimate. This is it folks. We are here at the night where history was made. <laughs> I am of course kidding. It's difficult to see on this photo, but if I highlight things a little bit, then you can see what's going on. You know, to me it looks like someone is measuring the angle up to Polaris. This was my first attempt to measure like this. What I did was I loosened the vise, adjusted the level to point straight to Polaris, and then tightened the vise again. Unfortunately, tightening the vise moved the alignment ever so slightly, so I had to open the vise again and readjust and then tighten it again. It took around 15 attempts before I called it good enough, and then I turned on the electronic measurements to see what the reading was. I knew full well it was not perfect, but close enough. When doing measurements like this, it is extremely important to use whatever measurements you get and not attempt to readjust it to the numbers you expect to get. Even better, don't calculate what you expect beforehand. It is what it is, 
If you fiddle around until you get what you expect, then you have proven absolutely nothing. So try to be as objective as possible, and if the results don't turn out as expected, then analyze what went wrong later. These are photos from another location. It took me nine hours in the car to get these photos. Why? Well, I took the first measurement close to home, at a latitude of 57 degrees. Then I drove down south approximately 60 nautical miles, which is the same as 69 miles, or 111.11 kilometers. Why this strange distance? Well, because if you go 60 nautical miles south or north, then you change your latitude by one degree. This is the same no matter if you use a flat earth map or Google Maps. The difference between the two is not in the latitude, but in the expected angle to Polaris. I had to make the trip three times to get reliable data. First time didn't work because I was using a counterweight approach in stormy weather and it was dangling all over the place. Next trip revealed that my measurement accuracy was not good enough to show only a one degree change in latitude. Third trip worked like a charm. Right, let's analyze the results. The north measurement, which I knew was not perfect, was still only 0.4 degrees off from the expected reading. Before going digital, I could only dream of getting such accurate results. The south measurements are crazy accurate with only a difference of 0.05 degrees from the expected value. The globe earth math predictions are therefore confirmed, not only at one latitude, but at two different latitudes. These measurements do not make sense on a flat earth. Here at the end, let's take a quick look at the elephant in the room. Consider two people on the northern hemisphere. One of them travels south, while the other one remains where he is. The one that travels keeps track of Polaris, either using his eyes or a smartphone app. He can report that Polaris did not fade, but disappeared behind the horizon. And his smartphone app shows it's below the ground, while the person that remained reports that Polaris is still visible. How can Polaris at the same time be below the flat earth disk and at the same time above it? On a spherical earth, this is perfectly explained. If you live at a different latitude than I took my measurements at, then consider making a latitude estimate using Polaris and post what the actual latitude was. Don't worry if your measurements aren't super accurate. It is what it is. Even if you're five degrees off, it will still show perfectly how curved the earth is if people from different latitudes do their measurements. I will make a follow-up video if enough post their findings. It's okay, they've gone. You can come out now.